Probability is one of the most misunderstood topics on the SHSAT test. And almost all of my students are super scared of it at first. But today I'll help you ace probability and boost your SHSAT score by 10% in under 20 minutes. If your SHSAT test is coming up in 2 months, 2 weeks or 24 hours and you can't crack the math section, check out our last minute cram course designed to improve your SHSAT score by 50% to 75 points within just 24 hours of focus study you can find the link to the last minute cram course in the description below also don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like our video probability was responsible for more than 10 percent of all the problems on shsat 2023 practice tests while most resources online make probability sound super complicated and complex let me explain it to you in a super simple formula. Outcomes that you're looking for divided by the total outcomes. That's literally all you need to know when it comes down to probability and you should be good. Now, let me demonstrate you by solving every single probability question from the SHSAT 2023 booklet. Problem 97 from test A. A bag contains 40 tiles that are either red, green or blue. A tile is selected at random. The color is recorded and the tile is put back in the bag. This process is carried out 120 times and 18 of those times a red tile is selected. Based on the information, what's the most likely number of red tiles in the bag? It's a two-step process, but let's dive in. The process is carried out 120 times and 18 of those times a red tile is selected. So the probability of red is 18 divided by 120. Do not simplify anything yet. Now, this is the probability of selecting a red tile Y because this is essentially how many red tiles are there versus how many total attempts. We're just using the formula. Now, we need to figure out what's the most likely number of red tiles in the bag. So the 40 tiles presented, we need to multiply 40 by the probability of red, which is 18 divided by 120. The reason why I, didn't, I said not to multiply is because 40 is 40 over 1. So you can cancel this and this. You get one here, you get three here. So it's essentially one over one, which is one times 18 over three, right? The answer is six A. Two-step process, you use probability, you use the formula, then you apply it to the total number of tiles. That's it. Problem 98 from test A, same exact approach. If 100 individuals will attend the museum next week, what's the best estimate? Best estimate based on last year's attendance of the number of children who will be in that group. So number of children. So now let's go. We got 1,750 children divided by total by 5,000. That is our probability of having a child, right? As opposed to adult or a senior. So then we just multiply 100 individuals by this probability. Now 100 is 100 over 1. Divide this by 100, divide this by 100, here you get 50, here you get 1. So it's 1 over 1, which is 1. Multiply by 1750 over 50. Drop the 0, it turns into 175 over 5. And this is 35G. Next problem, problem 99 from test A. A teacher will randomly select three students to be on a school committee. He will choose either a student from classroom A or a student from classroom B. With each selection, the tree diagram shows the selection possibilities. It's right here. What is the probability that the teacher will select two students from classroom A and one student from classroom B for the committee? How do you do this? So how many total options do you have? Right here. These are the total options. If you count it, you're going to get to eight. That's your total. How many options are good for you? What, how many options are you essentially looking for? So it's two students from classroom A. So it's A, A, and one person from classroom B. So A, A, B, or A, B, A, or B, A, A. These are the only three options. So it's three eights or B. If you're not sure, what you can do instead is also look at the chart. Check this out. So A, A, B, that's your first one. A, B, A, that's your second one. And B, A, A, that's a third one, which is also three out of eight. B, 
The next one is problem number 100. By the way, this is the fourth problem in a row on probability, just to emphasize how important the topic of probability is. A bag contains 15 marbles, 11 blue marbles, and 4 red marbles. Sarah picks one marble randomly, returns it to the bag, and then randomly picks one marble again. What is the probability that she picks a red marble both times? So let's go. What's the probability that she'll select the first marble as red? That's four. How many marbles are you looking for? Which is four, four red, divided by total, which is 15. Since she returns it back to the bag, the second time, the probability that she'll select the red marble is again four. That's how many you're looking for, divided by 15. Some of you will add it, and you get eight out of 15, which is G. And that's a wrong answer because you do not add probabilities, you multiply them. So it's 4 out of 15 multiplied by 4 out of 15, which is 16 over 225. And the answer is E. Problem 102. Test A. A deck of 52 playing cards contains 13 cards. Sarah has 12 cards from this deck in her hand, three of which are Cards. The other cards remain in the deck. What's the probability that a card drawn at random from the remainder of the deck will be a heart? So, you've got 52 playing cards total, but Sarah has 12 of these cards, so the total is really 40 cards now. Now, there are 13 hearts, but she already has 3 cards in her hand, so the remaining is 10. So, the probability remaining for the heart to be selected is 10 over 40, which is 1 over 4, which is F. Problem 103, test A. It is a probability question, but not as difficult of a probability question. The table shows the probability of randomly picking each flavor of candy from a bowl, picking candy from a bowl. Which flavor is most likely to be randomly picked? So... Essentially, the answer is butterscotch. It's pretty evident because that's the largest one, which is 57% here. This is 9.5%. This is 12.5%. This is 21%. For this selection, there's no need to convert you know, these decimals into the percentages. You just look for the highest decimal, which is A, the butterscotch. Last problem from test A. A shipment contains 170 small boxes of medical supplies. In a random sample of 20 of these boxes, 8 have damaged and the others are undamaged. Based on this sample, what is the best prediction of the number of undamaged boxes in the shipment, not including the boxes in the random sample? So what makes this problem really complicated is the wording. The problem itself is pretty easy. So what is the probability that there is a damage? Simple, 8 over 20. But we're looking for the undamaged items. So what's the probability of the boxes being undamaged is 12 over 20. What is our number of boxes that we have to apply this probability to? It's not 170, right? It's 170 minus the sample of 20, which is 150. From here on, it's super easy. 150 multiplied by 12 over 20 so that's over one cancel this cancel this this divided by two is six this divided by two is one so it's just 15 over one times six over one which is 90 and the answer is c problem 62 from test b a row of seats in theater contains 20 seats numbered from 101 to 120 this is to be honest pretty irrelevant information the probability that a randomly chosen seat in this row will be numbered 104 is X percent. What is the value of X? So let's go. What's the probability? How many options do you have for the seat to be 104? One, one option, right? How many total options do we have? 20. So that's equal to one out of 20. Let's convert this into percentages. How? It's one out of 20. Multiply this by five over five, which is essentially five out of 100 or 5%, hence x is equal to 5. Problem 97 from test B. Last week, Emily rode the bus to school on three of the five mornings and rode the bus home on four of the five afternoons. 
Based on the last week's events, what's the probability that Emily will ride the bus in the morning and the afternoon next Monday? So let's go like this. What's the probability that she will do morning on Monday? What is that? Simple. Three out of five. What's the probability that she will do afternoon on Monday? Easy. That's four out of five. Some of you will add it. Three out of five plus four out of five is equal to seven out of five. And you don't even have this option. So that's great. Because in reality, what you have to do is you need to multiply. Three out of five multiplied by four out of five. That's equal to 12 over 25. And the answer is C. Problem 100. This is probably the most complicated probability problem in SHSAT 2023. Harl has a one red spinner and one blue spinner. Each spin is divided into four equal sections numbered one through four. He spins each spinner once and writes down the number that each lands on. What is the probability that the two numbers when multiplied together will have four as a product? The reason why it's complicated because it's really difficult to visualize what's happening. So let me help you. So you got this spinner. It says one, two, three, four. Now you got this spinner. It also says one, two, three, four, right? So now what can happen on the first spinner? On the first spinner, it can be one, two, three, or four. On the second spinner, it could be one, two, three, or four. So what are possible options that we can have that will qualify to have four as a product? So he can do one on the first spinner, four on the second spinner. That's one times four, that's equal to four. He can do two on the first spinner, two on the second spinner, that's also four. And most of you forget that. Almost all my students forget that. That's four times one. One times four and four times one are two different versions. So this is also equal to four. So that's pretty much it. There's no other option how the product can be equal to four. So we got three options here. That's our top. What about the bottom? How many total options we have? Well, we have one, 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 two, one, three, one, four, right? Uh, two, one, two, 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 three, two, four, three, one, three, two, three, 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 four, and four, one, four, two, four, three, four, four. Total of 16 options. How can you get these 16 options easier? Is you have four options here, you have four options here, four times four is 16. So three out of 16. And that is our answer as F. Final problem, problem 103. The table shows the probabilities of a hockey team scoring different numbers of goals in the game. What is the probability that the team will score three or more goals in the next game? It's actually conversely one of the easiest problems here. So three goals is 0.21. Now four goals is 0.09. Five goals is 0.04. You add this up, you get 0 0.30. You add this up, that's 0.34. That's C, which obviously stands for 34%. So probabilities, as you can see, is a pretty extensive topic. As far as formulas is easy, but as far as how many problems we have on SHSAT, that's quite a lot. Master this. Hope this video helps you. If your SHSAT test is coming up in two months, two weeks, or 24 hours, you need to check out the last minute cram course now. This course is designed specifically for you to help you improve your SHSAT score by 50 to 75 points within just 24 hours of focus study. Find the link to the last minute cramp course in the description below. Bye-bye.